Panama is the country that links both Central and South America. This is also where the Panama Canal is located, a famous feat of human engineering which cuts through the center, linking both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans together, making an essential shipping route. In Panama City, the capital of Panama, there are modern-looking skyscrapers, restaurants, and casinos. In stark contrast, however, on the outskirts of the city is the Panamanian Forest. This forest is thick and vast and can be extremely dangerous terrain for those that know the area. So you can only imagine what extreme difficulty someone unfamiliar with the region would face. But with all that being said, there are still those mainly tourists that love hiking through the Panamanian forest. But with the help of a guide, having a guide in this region can literally be the difference between life and death. And in today's story, in my opinion, if nothing else, a guide would have definitely increased the likelihood of a positive outcome. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the dark and mysterious with a little tarot thrown in for good measure, then I am the girl for you. I upload two to three times a week on this channel, and if you're really a fan of tarot, you can join me on my other channel, Jennifer Walker Zen. So if that's of interest to you, I would ask you to like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so that you don't miss any of my uploads. Now. Let's get into today's story. On March 15, 2014, Chris Kramer and Lisanne Froon, who were both Dutch college students, headed to Panama for a six week long working vacation. They thoroughly and meticulously had everything mapped out. They planned to do lots of traveling and exploring in addition to working with different charities along the way. They were extremely excited about this trip and had even worked on an additional six weeks leading up to the trip itself to raise additional money. On March 15th, they arrived in Panama and things were going amazingly well. They were traveling, they were working with the charities, everything seemed to be going according to plan. At the end of the second week, they arrived at the town called Baquette and stayed at a hostel. On April 1st, while in Boquette, they decided to go on a pretty extensive hike around a massive volcano called the Baru Volcano. Near the summit of this volcano is an amazing overlook where once you were at the top provided a beautiful view of the entire area, which both Chris and Lisanne very much wanted to see. So both Lisanne, Chris, being somewhat experienced hikers, decided to go it alone. This particular hike, however, was usually a guide, meaning this was usually done with a local to make sure you stayed on the right path or you didn't fall off a cliff. The girls, however, decided to do this very intensive hike on their own. They decided to head out with the hostel owner's dog. They took with them the basic hiking supplies like food, water, their phones, and a digital camera. That night, the dog returned, but without the girls. This alerted the owners of the hostel and they decided to search the immediate area hoping the girls were just lost and it would find their way back by morning. The next morning, the girls had not returned. In addition, their parents were used to getting daily text messages from the girls, letting them know everything was all right. And these messages had abruptly stopped, alerting the parents that something was very wrong. And so the authorities were contacted. Search crews were organized on foot. The next day, April 2nd, they searched everywhere, but could find nothing. On the third day, they sent up aerial search teams. That also found nothing. On April 6th, the parents of Chris and Lisanne landed in Panama and immediately offered a $30,000 reward for any information about their daughters. But even with a financial reward, nothing turned up. Things remained this way until about three months later when a local woman found Lisanne's blue backpack five miles from where the girls were supposed to have hiked. In addition, the local woman that found the backpack was very familiar with the area and claimed she had been in the particular location several times and was certain it hadn't been there before. As for the backpack itself, 
it was in great condition. Everything in the backpack was very neatly placed in it and looked like someone had intentionally placed everything neatly in the backpack, zipped it up and placed it near the riverside to be found. What the backpack didn't look like was that it belonged to two missing people in the Panamanian jungle that had been missing for three months. Inside the backpack were sunglasses, a water bottle, some underwear, a digital camera, and both phones. When the initial search was conducted, it was done with a focus on the volcano area because that's the last place the girls were thought to have been. However, with the backpack being found five miles away, a new search of that area was conducted. They quickly found some of the girls' clothing neatly folded on the side of the river. After that, things were cold again. It would take another two months before they were finally able to locate more of the girls' clothing, along with some of the remains that DNA confirmed was theirs. The issue is that the state their remains were found in and the things that were found in conjunction with the remains that raises a lot of questions. Of the remains that were found, some of them belong to both Chris and Lee San. However, in addition to their remains, the remains of at least three other people, it was also concluded that an animal would have left scratches on the bones. No scratches could be found. The only way these bones could have been broken the way they were was with blunt force. Investigators looking into the phone records discovered that on April 1st, when the girls initially set out on the hike, there are a lot of distress calls that are sent within an hour of the hiking starting. So whatever happened to these girls happened almost immediately. Over the span of those first hours, days, the girls are still attempting to call. None of these calls connected. And then Lisanne's phone dies, but Chris's phone does not and it begins to be turned on and off spontaneously in an attempt to get reception. On April 6th, something interesting happens. Someone was trying to access Chris's phone. There were multiple failed login attempts to the point where it would no longer allow anyone's codes. From April 7th to April 10th, there were 77 calls attempted. And then on April 11th, that phone died as well. In addition to the phone, investigators began looking into the camera. The beginning of the camera roll appears to show the girls posing and having a good time. However, as the night begins to fall, their expressions begin to change and their pictures just stopped until April 8th. There are over 90 pictures taken between April 8th to April 10th, which is the period of time all the distress calls were made. On Chris's phone before it died, the pictures are extremely strange and disturbing. There are lots of theories about why they took the pictures they did. None of them included pictures of the girls except one, which shows the back of Chris's head that appears to be bleeding. The rest are pictures of the landscapes. That was taken in total darkness. There were pictures of candy wrappers. There were pictures of remaining supplies placed on a rock. And there was one picture which some have suggested a person's face down in the river. A picture of particular interest is picture 509, which was deleted from the camera. This picture was permanently deleted. In order to permanently delete a picture from a camera, you would need to do it from a laptop, which the girls did not have access to. So even if it was deleted by mistake, it still should have been in the camera's archives. This this means that someone professionally removed the picture from the camera. Even with all the inconsistencies with the case, the prevailing theory is that they both fell to their deaths, but still, there are others who believe that they were murdered. Now that you know the story, let's get some answers. Join me in my investigation room. Hello, my darlings. Welcome to my investigation room. And this is going to be for entertainment purposes only. To make this, um, this reading clear cut as possible, I am going to be using four different card systems. I'm going to be using the Tarot, the Kipper, the, the Gypsy, and the Lenormand. And I am breaking this down into questions. 
so that this can be uh, very straightforward. Okay, so, and again, I'm gonna preface this. This is entertainment purposes only. My first question is, did they get lost in the, in the jungle? Okay, so let's take a look at the cards here. I would tell you that there's a strong uh, aspect of it saying, no, we have a lot of negative cards here. Uh, we have negative cards here. I have negative cards here. So if uh, the straight answer for that is no, but why? Okay, it's saying that there was an action that was taken abruptly. So something sudden happened there, which caused worry and concern. They had everything that they needed. There was somebody who recognized them, was aware of them, okay? Could be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. Uh, somebody that they could have, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna speculate here, uh, for entertainment purposes only, someone that they could have known around something to do with work, okay? Uh, they lost clarity and there were some indecisions that happened. And again, I see some indecisions happened because of this masculine energy here, okay? And again, I see a masculine energy here, okay? Again, I see another masculine energy here, okay? Which caused some worry and concerns and sorrow. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next question. Okay, our second question is, were the girls followed? This guy's is very clear cut. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so yes, the girls were followed. Again, we see that there is this masculine energy. You can see here in this particular card that they were followed, they were spied upon, okay? And it was done in a very sneaky way. It feels to me like they wanted to get them alone, isolated. We see the Nine of Pentacles energy. So they did something where they could get one of them by themselves or get get them separated, okay? That's what I feel like here. They knew this person, okay? They've had a conversation with this person, okay? They have socialized with this person, okay? They've known this, they knew this person somehow, okay? And uh, we see that uh, they may have even, uh, you know, had, um, uh, it says there's a, there's a reunion or a union card for the gypsy can talk about something to do with something that dealt with before with this person. So they were aware of this person and they may have seen this person as a friendly energy, okay? Um, but we see that yes, they were followed and it was, it could be, I feel like, uh, entertainment purposes only, I feel like it was the person that they knew, okay? Uh, possibly through their uh, work that they were doing, okay? Okay, so there was a missing photo, as you guys know, that was deleted uh, from the laptop and a lot of people weren't sure how that could have been possible. So my question is, was the missing photo uh, deleted on purpose or, or removed on purpose? And I am getting a yes, okay? Uh, it's very interesting also because one of the things that I felt during my intuition was what was on the photo. Now, I was very drawn to this card here. I feel like the person who was involved with this was on the photo, okay? We see there's two feminine energies and a masculine energy. I feel like these could have been the girls and that could have been the masculine energy. That's why the photo was removed. Uh, we do see there's multiple people involved somehow with this situation or there could have been multiple people on the photo but in one particular part of that photo it had that particular person that was directly involved because we see that there is an issue there with a person who was ill intention there bad means to cause this big change okay we see message burden and a challenge so this this message is news would cause some kind of burden and challenge around this situation yes and we, they would, the, the individual would be recognized, okay? Entertainment, entertainment purposes only, I'm saying this is what I feel, okay? I feel like there's multiple people on that photo uh, and it shows, the photo shows something to do with uh, this particular person on that photo, possibly with the girls in the photo, okay? So I'm just saying I feel that, okay? 
And keep in mind, this is it for entertainment purposes only. Let's move on to our next question here. Okay, my beautiful souls, I love you guys so much. And I would definitely love to hear from you guys in the comments below on your thoughts and your feedback on what you feel may have happened with this situation for, from my fellow uh, intuitives and um, tarot readers. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys in another date or two. Please let me know if you have any cases you want me to go over in the comments below. And I will see you guys soon.